Namaste everybody. Uh, uh, we have uh, Professor Gauri Mahulikar today with us. She is an academic director of Chinmaya International Foundation in Kerala. She is very passionate about Vedic literature, Sanskrit studies, and has deep knowledge on our Indic traditions. Today, she, is, she has also participated in many national and international conferences. Her topic today is uh, Uttarayan and Sun Worship, um, also related to the Makar Sankranti festival, which is going on these days. Over to you, Gauriji. Thank you for joining. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Indic Studies Toronto, and especially Samir and uh, Prasad for uh, such a nice uh, opportunity for me uh, to interact and uh, and communicate with the people all over the world. So because this is Uttarayana, we are in Uttarayana. Makara Sankranti we celebrated just a few days back. I thought this is a topic worthwhile discussing today. So let us start with Uttarayana. I mean, this topic will cover some four or five points, like what is Uttarayana, the meaning and significance from the astronomical point of view, from the Ayurveda and from the philosophical point of view, of course. And then sun worship is the second part of this lecture because sun is worshipped uh, during uh, this uh, Uttarayana. And uh, what, what is the sun, the etymological meaning? Because I am a student of Rigveda. I am a student of Nirukta, etymological science. So the etymology, the functionality, then sun in the Vedic, the Puranic and the folk tradition, how the same thread continues throughout and what is the plan, you know, of the worship of sun uh, during these times. So these are the four or five points. So let me start uh, with Uttarayana without much ado and without any invocation, wasting any time in any invocation. Let me start with Uttarayana. The term Uttarayana is a composite term having two words in it, Uttara and Ayanam. Ayana is from the root in gatau, that is to go, to move forward. And so Ayanam is a marga, like Ramayanam, Ramasya Ayanam, right? So Uttarayanam, it is the moving forward in the northern direction. It's the northern solstice, you can say. And uh, what, is the, what is the etymology of Uttara? Ut is a prefix, it's an upasarga. And Tara is derived from the root tru. Thru is to, to swim, to, to get across, to cross, you know, tarantalao, tairna, these are the words which we get from the root thru. So this is getting across in ut. Ut is an upward direction. Like we have uddhara, utkramana. So ut gives you an upward direction. So getting across something in an upward direction, not in the Bhavasagar Tairna, but upward direction. It's a mental, intellectual, philosophical or spiritual, you can say, uh, uh, succession or upliftment and upgradation. Uttara, this Tara, Tama, you know, these are the two uh, suffixes which give you the comparative and the superlative degrees. So Uttara, vis-a-vis uh, -vis Uttama. Right, so Uttama is the best and Uttara is the better, you can say. But uh, the lexical meaning of Uttara is Upari Udicha Shreshteshu Uttarasya Danuttaraha Uttara Nanuttara. These two words are used in the sense of best Shreshtha. So this is the best, the covetable, the praiseworthy. So these are the meanings. Uh, in, in the Rigveda, there is a, there is a sukti called Uttare Santu Novo Viraha. Let our warriors be the best. Uttare here doesn't mean in the northern direction. Let our warriors stand in the northern direction protecting us. Not like that. Uttare Santu Novo Viraha. Our warriors be the best. So sun, you know, Uttarayana is the sun's movement, uh, he enters the Makara Rashi and from Makara to Karkavrutta, that movement of sun tilting towards northern direction uh, moves to the north of equator, that is called Uttarayana. And from the apex, uh, friends, we learn that uh, Bhishma Pitamaha uh, Mahabharata, we learn that 
Bhishma Pitamaha waited till Uttarayana for discarding his mortal coil. Uh, Uttaradik, Uttara is the best. So Uttaradik, the northern direction is also considered to be the best direction because uh, Kubera is the regent of the north and Lakshmi, uh, the wealth also uh, overpowers this northern direction. So Uttaradik is also very, very significant. Astronomically, uh, the Samvatsara, our entire year is split into two halves, Dakshinayana and Uttarayana. And uh, this Uttarayana, Dakshinayana Gita also speaks about in the eighth chapter, Agnir Jyoti Rahashuklaha, Shanmasa Uttarayanam, etc. So Uttarasyam Ayanam Gamanam Maghadi Shanmasat Makaha Kalaha. This is a period of six months from Magh till six months later. So Bhanoho Makara Sankrantehe Shanmasaha Uttarayanam and Karkades to Tathaivasya Shanmasa Dakshinayanam. So uh, I mean basically it will like you know approximately it covers the period from December 22nd to June 21st, the, the shortest of the night to the longest of the day. So as the day proceeds, you know, in the Uttarayana, the day becomes longer and the night becomes shorter. And day or light is always signifying knowledge. And therefore, the knowledge period getting expanded, that is the uh, philosophical meaning of that. Ayurveda, Vagbhata and Sushruta, they are very clear when they say that Uttarayana is the period when Adhanancha Tadadatte Nrunam Pratidinam Balam. The sun, Apyayate, uh, the sun gets, you know, uh, poshana, he gets nourished. Due to what? He takes out your energy and your uh, vigor and therefore, to maintain ourselves, we have to eat very nutritious diet, especially the heavy diet of till and good and proteins and black clothes we wear so that absorption, absorption rate is much higher in the dark clothes. So uh, Bhagavata and Sushruta, they say, Sarva Praninam Balam Apahiyate. The bala is taken out by the sun. And therefore, you have to maintain your body by eating sumptuous food. In the Smriti period, Harita Smriti, he says, these uh, in the six Rutus, Shishira, Vasant, and Grishma, they form the Uttarayana. Shishira, Vasant, and Grishma, and Varsha, Sharad, and Hemanta, they form the Dakshinayana. So Shishira, that is the winter season, and then coming the spring and Grishma, the summer, they form the Uttarayana per se. So we have seen what is the astronomical. I am not a Jyotisha Shastra student. I haven't studied Jyotisha as a Shastra, and therefore I can't elaborate much on the astronomical significance of that, except that these are the two halls, Dakshinayana and Uttarayana. I am a student of Vedanta philosophy and therefore Uttarayana, I see some deeper meaning into that. It is not just uh, uh, moving in the northern direction. It is much more uh, added to that. It gives you the philosophical uh, upgradation. I am reminded of uh, a Maharashtrian saint poetess, Bahinabai. She was the uh, she was the devotee and was a disciple of Santa Tukaram, Jagadguru Santa Tukaram. She has made very nice comments on uh, Uttarayana, you know, uh, an illiterate, so to say, uh, uh, from the university point of view, illiterate uh, lady, but highly philosophical in her approach. She says, Prapanchi Vinmukha Jaliyane Chitta Uttarayana Satya Techi Amha. What is Uttarayana? She says, the moment prapanchi vinmukha, you get detached from your worldly affairs, from your bhavasagara, from your samsara, 
that is uttarayana satya techiyama that is uttarayana for people like us those who are traversing on the path of philosophy on the spiritual growth for us uttarayana and dakshinayana the calendars and the timing in the calendar doesn't much matter the moment the moment of detachment for the worldly things starts uttarayana in our life so the calendar may say it is dakshinayana so the akalana bindu the 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 moment of realization self actualization and detachment that is uttarayana the moment you become prapancha abhimukha towards inclined towards prapancha it is dakshinayana in your in your life in your philosophical life nahi kajataya uttarayana se sangitale sache tujha putra so whatever the calendar says it is dakshinayana and uttarayana nahi kajataya for the person who is realized for him the calendar doesn't matter much after realization uttarayana the the calendar uttarayana doesn't much matter so it is the mental and spiritual philosophical enlightenment and that moment starts uttarayana in one's life so uttarayana what i mean to say is it is you know uttarayana or makar sankraman sankranti maghi sankrant or maghi lohri bihu pongal makar jyoti so many different different names but this gives you sankramana <coughs> krama again is a movement krama uh, urukrama for example vishnu is called urukrama a wild wild strider you know one who takes very wide steps and strides so krama is again a gatishila dhatu sankrama sam iti sam uh, sam has two three different meanings uh, now whatever meaning in which we are using it nowadays is like sam is refined or sam is like uh, done in a finer manner with a finesse that is you know samskar or uh, a refined oil you know it is samskarit tel uh, tel and all that but sankramana sam according to yask sam iti ekikarane when all people move in one from one direct one place to another place you know the movement together gives you sankramana this is the word from where we have the we have derived the word kranti from krama and kranti is parivartan kranti is transformation kranti change so any change per se that which is the only real thing in our life change is the only static thing in our life in a paradoxical way so that uh, signifies uh, an intellectual rejuvenation and transformation parivartan so to say so we should always look at sankramana with a very positive attitude and all over india we are celebrating this and it is said that sun gets apyayate arkah you know uh, sushruta says apyayate arkah the sun gets nourishment from where from where from whom we are giving our bala sarvesham praninam balam apahiyate and he gets nourished up so bhaskarasya yatha tejah makarasthasya vardhate in makar from makar sankramana the tej of bhaskara goes on increasing tathaiva bhavatam tejo vardhatam iti kamaye similarly your tej your spiritual luster you should be glowing with spirituality and with inner realization you know so that is the real wish for makar sankramana i mean flying kites and eating pongal chakra pongal and all uh, and feel good is uh, these are all the external things in worldly we should be facing some change in our life that is the true purpose of makar sankramana with this now one topic gets over uttarayana and let us move to the uh, sun worship and let us start uh, deliberating on uh, what is the etymology of sun uh, 
uh, how he is portrayed, how he is uh, uh, eulogized in the Rigveda, in the Puranas, and later on in our folk tradition, which are prevalent even now. So Sun is basically the Kala Purusha. He is the time maker. Uh, he energizes all the beings. Sun is life. Water is life. Similarly, sun is life. Surya, Sarateva, Suvateva, Suvati Karmani, Lokam Prerayati. Suvati. Suvati is Prerayati. He impales people for doing some work. So he is the inspirer, the stimulator, the motivator of all the beings, not only humankind, but all the beings. And that's why we pray to Sun God as Tat Savituhu Varenyam Bhargaha Devasya Dhimahi Dhyo Yonaha Prachodaya. Let him kindle and kindle our, our intellect and uh, motivate us. We are contemplating on that highest luster of uh, the goddess Savita. He is also Aditya because Adatte Rasan Iti Aditya. He takes out all the rasa, the, the juices, the, the liquid, uh, you know, from the moisture from the earth and then he collects it in the solar orb and then when the time comes in the Varsha, he showers with plentitude. He is the son of heaven. Divasputra Yasuya Yashamsata. He is the son of heaven. But in the Puranas, we call him as Japa Kusuma Sankasham Kashyapi Yam Mahadyatim Tamorim Sarvapa Pagnam Pranatos Midivakaram. So Kashyapa and Aditi are the eternal parents of all the gods. And he is the son of Kashyapa and uh, Aditi. And therefore, he is called Aditehe Putraha and therefore Aditya. Sun is, right from the Rigveda, sun is associated with eye, with seeing. And uh, seeing is knowing and knowing is designing. Knowing is, uh, seeing is knowing is given by Adi Shankaracharya also in his Brahma Sutra, Ikshatyadhikarana. Iksha, that is to see, is not limited to physical, phenomenal seeing, but it is knowing and, you know, uh, what you can, amalgamating the knowledge with our own selves. So he is like a fiery ball. He is like an eye of Mitra and Varuna. Surya Atma Jagatas Tastushascha, he is the very soul of the movable and the immovable world. Jagataha, movable, and Tastushaha, Stha, one who is stationary. Suryo Bhutasya Ekam Chakshuhu, he is the only I. Suryaha Chakshusham Adipati, Rugveda, Atharvaveda, they all associate Surya with Chakshu, that is the I. And in the famous uh, Purusha Sutta, we have uh, Chakshu Suryo Ajayata, Chandrama Manaso Jataha, Chakshu Ho Surya Ajayata. So Surya was born from the eye of that cosmic gigantic Purusha. And therefore, after death, the vision of our eye goes back to its source, that is the sun. Suryam Chakshuhu Gachatu. Let my eye, not the physical eye, but the vision of the eye, go back to its source, to the Surya. Surya is called Uru Chaksha. He has got hundreds and thousands of eyes because he sees through his plenty of rays. And therefore, he is called Uru Chaksha or Vishwa Chaksha or Dure Drash. He is a far sighted person. And Surya is also philosophically, uh, he is the prana, he is the kriya shakti uh, who works from our right nostril. The pingala nadi, the left gives you the ida nadi. So the pingala nadi also. He is the most, what you can say, developed uh, natural phenomenon and most transparent. I mean, there is no much of personification 
uh, which has uh, overshadowed his natural uh, phenomena because he is the most uh, transparent form of the natural phenomenon, the light principle. And every function depends on him, uh, the warmth, the power, the heat, the, the ability to work, the capacity and the enthusiasm, you know, the willingness to work all depends on the sun. And therefore, in the snowy days, especially in the Western countries there, you know, when the sun doesn't shine at all, uh, people feel gloomy. Physically, they are ill. Psychologically and mentally, they feel depressed. So he is the, the, the source of life and vigor. He invigorates us for everything. Uh, in the Rugveda and in the later days, you know, uh, Puranic days, the mild and the wild, both the aspects of the sun are equally uh, described by, by the poets. It is said by Yaska again in the Nirukta that uh, this light principle works on three terrains or three, not terrain, three phases, three uh, what you can say levels. So the terrestrial form of the sun is the fire which burns. It may be the kitchen fire, it may be the sacrificial fire, it may be the wild fire, you know, the, the wild fires, especially in California and all that. So that is the terrestrial form of the sun. Lightning is the atmospheric form and sun, uh, the Surya or the Savita or the Vishnu or Aditya, you know, the Tejogola, is the celestial form. So the same light principle works on these three levels, uh, on the Bhuloka, Bhuvarloka, and Swarloka. And because it is said, uh, it is seen, it is witnessed by us that the sun traverses from the east to the west, this whole vault of sky, you know, and this is so vast. And therefore he is compared to, uh, compared to, uh, swiftly flying bird, Laghushenaha or Raghushenaha and Arushaha, he is a red color, Suparna, an eagle, you know, uh, red color and all that. At one place in Yajurveda, it is stated, Suryo Gandharvaha, Surya is a Gandharva and Marichayaha Tasya Apsarasaha and his rays are the Apsaras. Now, calling Surya as Gandharva again takes me, uh, you know, reminds me of the, stay, of the story of Pururava who brought fire from the heavenly world, from the Gandharvas. And he is the one who developed the three kinds of fires, you know. Pura Agnihi Eka Eva Asir, Ailaha Trin Stan Chakara. So, so, some such stories you uh, find in Shatapata Brahmana, and later on in Matsya Purana, Vishnu Purana, and other Puranas. So uh, this is the sun, and he has got like, uh, like the Puranic Shiva, Shiva, Parvati, Skanda, and Ganesha, the entire family is uh, described. Similarly, right from the Vedic times, we have the entire family structure of this sun. <clears throat> Just now we saw that he is the he is the son of Kashyapa and Aditi. So Kashyapeyam, Mahadyatim, Aditya, Yanamo, Namaha, etc. We have Aditya Hridaya Stotra in the Ramayana. He has got wives. Shaunaka's Brihaddevata gives three wives to him. One is Saranyu, uh, Usha and Vrishakapai. Uh, I'll tell more about this Saranyu and uh, Vrishakapai. Now, this Saranyu is, it, she happens to be the daughter of Tvashta. Who is Tvashta? Tvashta is an architect of the gods, you know, and uh, because again, he is the solar form, uh, which gives you the creative energy, you know, and uh, this son has a charioteer called Aruna. He is also the son of Kashyapa with another wife called Vinata. Then uh, he has got children, Yama and Yamuna, Yama and Yami. Yama Yavi Samvada Sutta is there in the 10th mandala of the Rukveda. Then Vaivasvata Manu and Ashwins from his one wife, which is Saranyu. 
then saranyu uh, kritvas kritvi savarnam adaduhu something like that we will come to the story part of that that narrative so that chaya or savarna another wife the dummy we can say of uh, this saranyu or saudnya from this savarna he got savarni manu uh, son got savarni manu and uh, shani and tapati the tapi river uh, then uh, aruna once had a, a woman form you know a female form and from that female form of aruna uh, sugriva was born so sugriva is called surya putra he is ina putra ina is surya so he is called aina or ina putra and uh, interestingly the sugriva was nourished when he was very small uh, infant he was nourished by gautam and ahalya very interesting right and then uh, from kunti a uh, son got a son called karana and who was nourished by adhiratha and radha in the mahabharata so right from the ramayana from to till the mahabharata we have this family of surya extended okay now coming to twashta and then to saranyu twashta is the father in law he is the creative energy of the of the son in the puranas he is described as one of the adityas and uh, aditya is called vrishakapi and so saranyu is called vrishakapai so there is a vrishakapi him in the 10th mandala of the rigveda maybe we we'll, we can have some other time some uh, uh, what say dialogue hymns from the rigveda or something like that so saranyu the the daughter of twashta was wedded to vivaswat and she is called surya and there is a surya vivaha sukta very interesting sukta in the rigveda 10th mandala the same sukta occurs with some uh, more mantras in the atharva veda 14th kanda as the vivaha sukta now what is this vrishakapi he has been called as vrishakapi and saranyu is called vrushakapai so vrushakapi again has got two words vrusha and kapi what is kapi kapi is uh, i mean uh, generally we say kapi is a monkey right uh, uh, yeah kapi is a monkey but because kapa is kapi kapa gamane or kampa chalane he is very fickle goes on jumping from one tree to another one branch to another and therefore he is called kapi but uh, ramanujacharya a great vaishnava philosopher he has uh, interpreted this kapi and very rightly so etymologically kam jalam pibati iti kapi hi nama surya what an interesting etymology kam ijjala ka ijjala and one who drinks water one who absorbs all the water evaporates all the water uh, uh, portions is kapi that is the sun and therefore kapyas he gave this etymology while interpreting one of the uh, shruti vachana from chandogya upanishad yasya kapyase eva kshini you know so one who has got his eyes like uh, kapyas and kapyasa he interprets as kapina asyate iti kapyasam nama kamalam so uh, that which is made to bloom at the sun rays by the sun rays and that obviously is lotus because there are lotuses especially the red lotus which blooms at the sunrise so sun is kapi who drinks water sun is also vrusha because he showers that water vrusha again will have uh, two meanings uh, you know from vrusha varshane uh, one who showers and uh, all the western philosophers and western critics many times you know they take vrusha as vrushab and that gives a physical uh, might and vigor to the to the person so vrusha is very valiant vrusha is very rugged robust and he is kapi he is the sun so he is the sun who moves he is the sun who drinks the water 
and gives back in return in plenty. And therefore, he is called Vrushakapi. So, Aditya is called Vrushakapi, uh, son. Then, Agni is called Vrushakapi. Agni, Indra is called Vrushakapi. And sometimes, Vishnu in the Rigveda is called Vrushakapi. So, this was regarding the Vrushakapi. Now coming to Saranyu, who is called also Grushakapai, or Saranyu, who is the daughter of Tvashta, uh, Sru Sarane, Saranath Saranyu, who, one who goes near the sun, is Saranyu. And it is said, uh, Sayanacharya, Yaskacharya, they interpret this Saranyu as this is the ray of the sun which lingers even after the sun sets. So even after setting of the sun, the rays, the light which remain on the horizon, that is Saranya. Philosophically, she is Prakriti uh, and Surya is the Kala Purusha. She is the Purusha and uh, Saranya is the Prakriti. Uh, philosophically, again, she will be uh, equated with the all-pervading consciousness. So... Uh, there are many, many meanings of this Saranyu, but let us uh, uh, take a narrative which is uh, referred to in the Rigveda in the 10th, 17th Sukta, 10th Mandala, and which, you know, I'm very fond of uh, finding such narratives which we find the source in the Rigveda or Atharva Veda. The same narrative uh, we find in the uh, Brahmana, the Shatapata Brahmana, etc., or the Itareya Brahmana. The same narratives are percolated down in the Puranic tradition and the same are prevalent in the folk tradition in the form of some stories. We have a very nice narrative of uh, Surya and Saranyu, which we have even today in our folk tradition, in the Marathi tradition also and in the Gujarati tradition also. So let me uh, share one such narrative, which is very, very famous, and which has percolated down this tradition, you know, uh, 3,000, 7,000, whatever be the period of the Rigveda, right from the Rigveda to the epics, to the Puranas, to the uh, folk tradition, the Katha literature, we have this narrative. So this is Surya and Saudhnya. Saudhnya or Saranyu, the daughter of Tvashta. She was married to the son, okay? And from, uh, she gave a uh, son, you know, uh, the, the children called Yama and Yami and the Vaivasvata Manu and so many others. And then she was unable to bear the luster of the son and therefore she created her own replica. Krithvi Savaranam Adaduhu Vivasate. She created her replica and gave it to the son. And she went down, went to, to her father's place. Uh, she took the form of a mare and Vivaswan then, you know, he didn't even realize that uh, he is uh, having uh, for his wife the replica of uh, Savarana. And then when he realized that, for that also there is a story. And then when he realized that, he also assumed the form of a horse and uh, went back to, uh, to uh, the Saranyu. Saranyu was wandering, was grazing in the form of a mare in the Uttarakuru region. And son also went there in the form of a horse. And from the, both are in the horse form now. And from their mating, Ashwina, the two Ashwini Kumar, they were born. They are called Ashwina because they were born from the Ashwa form of their parents. They are also called Nasatya because, you know, Nasatya, as Yaska gives the two meanings, uh, Nasatya, you know, they were thrown, the, the semen was thrown out uh, from the nostrils by Saranyu. Uh, thinking that this horse is somebody else, Parapurusha, and therefore she wanted to discard that semen. And uh, Nasatya, they were born from the nostrils, and therefore they are called Nasatya. And another meaning is Na Asatya. Very interesting. Na Asatya, they are 
ever truthful they always keep the promises and therefore they are called nasutya so this is the the story of uh, this uh, saranyu and uh, uh, this one uh, surya now surya has created uh, saranyu has created her chaya or savarna and uh, that chaya gave birth to a twin shani and tapati and then savarni manu of course from uh, uh, saranyu it was vaivasvata manu and from savarna it was savarni manu and then what happened was shani is the son of uh, chaya and yama was the son of saranyu once these two sons had a fight yama and shani had a fight and in that fight when both went uh, weeping you know crying to the mother chaya chaya cursed yama and she took side of her own son shan now when son realized this he was he really wondered how could a mother curse her own child that was the time when he contemplated and he realized that oh chaya is the stepmother to yama no wonder she cursed yama and then he went in the form of uh, uh, this one you know a horse but first he went to twashta to enquire about his daughter because he was damn sure that uh, the daughter will go back to her father's house right so twashta said yes she had come here she stayed here for a few days and then she wandered she uh, she left my house but why did she come leaving my place asked the son and twashta said you are too lustrous she couldn't bear your luster and therefore uh, she she left you she abandoned you and then uh, son suggested can you pair off some of my luster chop off some of the luster because he was an architect he was a taksha he was a carpenter right twashta so can you chop off some of my luster minimize my luster to a little bit a little extent so that uh, she can stay with me and twashta said okay let me do that and he paired off some of the luster he put him on the wheel and chopped off uh, some of the luster it is said and that luster which was chopped off that was too fiery right it was fire of course and from that he made some of the gods weapons even the vajra agasti also gave his uh, uh, bones but that sharpness and the fatality was given by the sun's luster the trishula was made from that and the chakra the sudarshana chakra was made from that so the gods weapons were made from that chopped up luster matsya purana adds one point to this story this story comes from the from the rigveda to the brahmana literature matsya purana adds uh, a detail and it says that when chopping off that luster while minimizing the luster sun's feet got cut sun's feet got hurt and therefore sun is never worship in the vigraha and even if he is worshiped in the vigraha in the full uh, personified murti his feet are not shown instead high shoes are there on his feet now this is a very interesting detail and if you go to jagannath puri uh, 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 to odisha and visit the sun temple at konar you will see in the garbhagriha it's empty i mean there is no uh, it's not a living sun temple so to say but on the three sides of the the west uh, north and uh, south side there are sun images and these sun images if you see there are high leather shoes so we don't see the the feet the toes of the sun god samacharana to say you know we don't see the samacharana instead we see the shoes the leather shoes the high shoes and in the northern part of india wherever you see the 
uh, the sun temples, this is very typically shown as sun is wearing the high shoes. Whereas in the south, if you come, in Konkan also, there are so many sun temples. I have visited a sun temple in the Nagiri district, uh, a small village called Kasheri. And there is a Tamrapata. I have deciphered that Tamrapata. And, uh, you know, that was given uh, by Shilahara King Bhoja II uh, to a family called Bhagavats. And it's, it's a land grant, basically. There are three folios to that Tamrapata. There is also a sun temple in Kasheri. And in the Magh month now, in a few days to come, they have a seven days festival till Maghi Saptami, Ratha Saptami. So, but uh, in, in these temples, the, the Vigraha is not shown with the high shoes. So this has remained to the northern part of India and to the west and to the south part of India. We don't have this tradition of wearing high shoes. And there are so many living tem sun temples in the Konkan, but we don't have uh, the shoes concept there. I was very curious to see, but uh, there are no shoes on the sun vigraha. Now, this story, uh, how the sun worship started, this story is related to uh, the story of Samba. Samba, Krishna's son from uh, one of his wife uh, called Jambavati. Now, this, this is again, you know, story within a story, story within a story. They are like interlinked. So many stories are there. And uh, if you, uh, you might be knowing that uh, when Vinashakale Viparita Buddhihi, right? So when the doomsday or the, when the, the fall of the Dwapara Yuga was to come and the end of Krishna and the end of Dwapara Yuga, so to say, Samba had this uh, evil uh, uh, thought in his mind that uh, he, he portrayed himself as a pregnant woman and asked Narada, uh, what will be born? Will it be a son or a daughter? And Narada, first, sometimes it is not Narada, the Saptarshis. And they, knowing that he is playing a prank and a mischief, uh, the Rishis cursed him. And uh, they said that neither a son nor a daughter, uh, a musala will be born, an iron pestle will be born. And that pestle will bring uh, the end of the Yadavakula. And then really a pestle was born. I mean, he, he gave birth to a pestle. And then uh, these Yadavas, including Samba, they cut it into small iron pieces and uh, threw them, threw the pieces in the ocean. But then the ocean brought them back to the shore and the sharp blades of grass, you know, they, uh, they were produced from that. And we, we have heard the word Yadavi. And when the Yadukulas, it's the end time and Krishna is already gone uh, by, a hunt, by a hunter's uh, arrow. Balarama has met his death and these Yadavas are fighting between themselves. And then this Samba suffered from leprosy. Samba suffered from skin disease. Leprosy is basically a, a skin disease. And it was said that he will be cured only by worshipping the sun. And therefore, he built so many sun temples. The sun temples are built by Samba or his followers. And to worship this sun, he, the, the priests were not available. So he brought the Magha Brahmins from the Shakala Dvipa. Shakala Dvipa is today's Iran, it is said. And interestingly, Shakala is one of the branches of the Rigveda, Shakala Shaka. And Shakala is the one who did the Padapatha of the Rigveda. So in the Uttarakuru, the northwest front of uh, India, today's India, that is the Uttarakuru region, and Samba found these Brahmins uh, from there. And Aitareya Brahmana, uh, which belongs to the Rugveda, Shakala Shaka, it states that this region is beyond the Himalayas. But that north, uh, 
uh, north but the western part of the Himalayas. Even the Pali literature refers to the Uttarakuru region and the Uttaramadra region, which is Balhika and Madri, Pandu's wife, second wife, belongs to that, that region. Now, these Magha Brahmana, people say that they are the fire worshippers of today's Iran. Fire worshippers, the Zoroastrians, maybe, I mean, we can link them to that. But uh, in the Konkan also, I told you there are many uh, living sun temples and there these uh, Brahmanas, they are not called Magha Brahmanas, they are called Bhojakas or Daivadnya Brahmana in Konkan, Daivadnyas. And these Daivadnyas, they are Daivam Janati Iti Daivadnya, those who, who know the, the astrological part of that. Uh, the, your Jataka, they are called the Ivadna. They are good, you know, uh, good at palmistry, good at uh, Jataka, reading your uh, horoscope. And they are called Bojaka or the Ivadna. They are Ayurveda practitioners as well. And they are astrologers also. So there is a multiple tradition of this Bojaka or the Ivadna Brahmanas in the in the in the Konkan region, especially. Now we have seen this uh, narrative, the Saran news narrative. Okay, uh, she uh, her narrative is there in the Rugveda, Atravaveda, in the from the Vivaha Sukta. We saw it from the Brahmana literature, from the Puranas, from the epics and everything. How it has come down to the folk tradition? That is another interesting part. And this folk tradition, especially, it has come in two, uh, like two streams. We can, uh, we can find easily the two streams of that. And, uh, you know, uh, Randal Mata in Balsad in Gujarat is one such tradition. Uh, how this Randal or Rad Randan came, came into existence, it is from Radni. And Radni is from Saudnya. Saudnya is from Saranyu. So Saranyu becoming Saudnya. Saudnya is Radni, the Rani. Okay, Rani. And Rani becomes Randal. And Randal na Ghodo, the horse dance, is a very uh, interesting topic, you know, of uh, the, this Randal na Ghodo. That is the main thing. And it is stated, you can find, Google Swami will give you uh, the Randalna Godo, that there are so many videos on Google. And uh, the festival is in Uttarayana. This festival is in Uttarayana. And women folk, they gather together in a hall. They joyfully dance and they mime the actions of a horse. They mime the actions of a horse. So that is the main principle of this Randalna Godo. So Ghodo, again, Ghoda associated with the sun, we have seen. Sun took the form of a horse and then gave birth to Ashwini Kumara. Sun has seven horses yoked to his chariot. That is also there. Sun and horse is like a vrusha, a valiant animal. Even now, the energy is uh, calculated in horse power, right? So horse symbolizing power, symbolizing the ruggedness, the manliness, you know, and the vigor, the strength, the physical strength, and therefore associated with the sun. All these are there for Randal Nagur. Another animal which is uh, related to the sun is cow and bull. And therefore the Jallikattu, the, the horse, uh, not the horse, the bull fights and the, uh, the car traces, you know, the, all these uh, take place in, in the Uttarayana because these are the Pashus, these are the zoomorphs, so to say, of the sun. This is one stream I was telling you from Saudnya to uh, Radni to Randal and from Saranyu to Ranyu and Ranubai. Aditya Ranu Baichi Katha in Maharashtra, uh, you know, that is also a very famous thing. So Aditya Ranu Baichi Katha, 
so this is also another uh, uh, what you can say uh, yeah. this one mm. uh, phase or uh, another uh, this one uh, uh, story of aditya ranubai ji katha and then we come to the last portion of this uh, the philosophical portion of this and that is regarding the Mm, uh, the elemental thing and uh, <coughs> the yoga thing the philosophical thing we already saw that sun is the the kriya shakti or the prana shakti especially working through our right nostril which is pingala nadi pingal is tawny is brownish yellowish color which is sun's color so uh, this ends in the right nostril the surya nadi and associated with yamuna the daughter of the sun and whereas it corresponds to the uh, from the right nostril it works to the left hemisphere of the brain and uh, the the prana shakti from the left nostril connects to the right hemisphere of the brain which is which is powered by associated with ganga and this is associated with yamuna ganga gives you the coolness and yamuna gives you that power and the vigor and uh, so they balance you know in the in the middle sushumna nadi this is like a braided uh, hair you know the three strands coming ida pingala and sushumna and this is related to the yoga philosophy and uh, uh, if we see gnaneshwari in the 6th chapter i i really wonder sometimes you know uh, uh, bhagavad gita has been commented upon by so many acharyas all the sanskrit acharya the shankara acharya ramanuja acharya madhva vallabha abhinava gupta pada all have commented on this nobody has given the kundalini bhed in the 6th chapter commentary but it is only gnaneshwara it is gnaneshwara who has given the shat chakra bhedini kundalini and he has uh, uh, associated all these to the sun the moon and uh, the maheshwara the yogi raj you know and jaya cha kapadi azuni maheshwara he says and it is all rooted you know this three uh, strands of the braid are rooted at the muladhara chakra so this corresponds to the chakra theory this corresponds to the kundalini yoga so there are many dimensions to this uh, philosophically and in the hatha yoga especially we have so many various perspectives of this uh, sun worship in in the uh, meditation meditative aspect not uh, worshiping through dhupa deepa naivedya but meditation aspect and gnaneshwara says it is nagini se pile kumkume nahale very vivid uh, description uh, it can be uh, described only by a person who is atma sakshatkari and only by a person who himself has this experience of kundalini jagarana only he can explain it in such a vivid manner nagini se pile kumkume nahale varan gheuni ale se je jaise taishi te kundalini motaki auta varani adho mukha sarpini nideli ase Uh, i have an article on this kundalini yoga of uh, gnaneshwara maybe i will share it with uh, samir ji and prasad ji if i get their uh, email address and uh, uh, if you want you can uh, also have that article you know uh, for you or they can share it with you so to sum up now uh, sun is the life principle sun is the inspiration to live uh it it's no uh, no wonder it is the 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 natural source of rich natural source of vitamin b and therefore the surya namaskaras you know especially in this season surya namaskara of course surya namaskara has no season so to say but it is a form of worshiping sun 
uh, uttering 12 names of son advadasha aditya and uh, falling prostrate that gives you also uh, physical and mental strength and uh, offering water to the sun standing in the midst of the water in the river uh, you know the uh, the argya uh, so ramdas swami especially in maharashtra uh, did that because he had balopasana uh, as the main thing for the youth of maharashtra not youth of maharashtra youth of all over the world and therefore uh, standing in the morning sun uh, having sun bath uh, all these things you know they keep you physically mentally and spiritually fit so i think uh, uh, whatever scientific truths are there they should be associated uh, with spirituality with religiosity unless science and spirituality go hand in hand you know we are uh, we are falling short in recognizing our own heritage and recognizing the importance of why our ancient seers have given so many things in uh, in a nutshell and so many things in uh, like you know in a cryptic manner uh, and not really uh, uh, with not really you know in a very a clear cut manner but in sometimes in a very cryptic manner so i think i am done for my part Uh, this was the uttarayana this is the uttarayana the next few months six months are the months of the uttarayana and uh, let us have this sun worship uh, inculcated in us and let us uh, let us pray to sun god to give us more vigor more energy and uh, yeah energize us and invigorate us so that we will be in a position to give more and more to the society around us thank you for this wonderful opportunity and i hope uh, you would uh, uh, you like this lecture if there are any questions yathamati uttaritum prayatishye dhanyavada Thank you so much, Gauri ji. So much information about the sun itself. I can't believe it. I did not know all this. Not even part of it. It's unbelievable. All we are stuck with Surya Namaskar and you know prayers in the morning and so on. But so much history and tradition behind it. So the the you know if anyone has a question, please type it in the chat or raise a hand in Zoom. Preferably raising a hand is better so you can ask it yourself. so i will start quickly it's really a small yeah. question uh, you mentioned about the the seven horses which the sun is associated with the ratha with seven horses i have read somewhere that, that these seven horses identify with the colors of a rainbow essentially it's the sun rays which come in and it splits into seven rays of a rainbow with different wavelengths and different strengths and they were using those seven wavelengths for medical purposes do you have a comment on that i am not a student of that but then it it is associated the seven colors uh, with the seven rainbows the seven horses and that gives you that can take you to the color therapy as well it's an alternative therapy by the way <laughs> sunil kumar ji please go ahead yeah uh, am i audible yes you are yes. hello yeah uh, namaste madam uh, namaste. fascinating lecture uh, my question was uh, what about the theory that the zoroastrians or the parsis were a split from the vedic pantheon and their ahura mazda is uh, a distortion of asura uh, asura and, varuna uh, second yeah and secondly uh, they had this religion uh, which spread from uh, persia in ancient times to the roman empire mitraism which is also from vedic yeah. mitra mitra culture so, we had yes so uh, what was the impact of uh, sun worship at that time because it was all very fluid it was very different from what it is now so uh, your perspective on that 
thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. That's a very good question. And uh, I have myself spoken a few times on this uh, Ahura Mazda and Asura Varuna. In fact, Asura, why we should not take that Asura as an opposite of Sura, as we take normally in the Puranic Sura Asura Yuddha, right? So Sura is gods and Asura is demons. But uh, here Asura is from Ahura or Ahura is from Asura and this is not uh, split as A and Sura, you know, like uh, A being a negative particle. It is Asu plus Sura. How you split the word that gives you the meaning, okay? And Asu is Prana, Asu is Shakti and Ra is a Matvarthiya Pratyaya, which is a possessive suffix like Ruchi Ra, Madhu Ra, Asu Ra. So Asu Yukta, one who is full of energy and one who is full of strength is called Asu Ra. So that is a Prana Shakti basically. Uh, that is the etymological meaning. But then uh, I am not quite sure, because I am not an expert in this uh, to comment whether Ahura Mazda is a distorted version of uh, uh, Asura Varuna or it is the vice versa. Uh, but I feel personally, I mean, looking at the broad factual things, you know, sun worship, it must have evolved in a region where sun is abundantly found. I mean, and therefore, uh, in a land like India, where we have abundant abundance of sunlight, it's not a wonderful thing and not a very, you know, amazing thing. Oh, you are worshipping sun. We have to worship sun because he is the source of our energy. And we see him day in and day out. And therefore, it, if at all the worship has gone from one place to another, it must have gone from India to other places and not from other places to India. That is my humble opinion on my uh, general understanding of it. <laughs> okay. uh, one question in the chat from Hemalata. She says in the, the Tamil people, perform Guru Pravesh before sunrise, would there be a reason for it? Oh, I don't know. I don't know why. In fact, we should have Guru Pravesh in the bright sunlight because we see the houses, we, we choose the house where there is plenty of sunlight and air, you know, otherwise we feel gloomy. Uh, why before the sun sunrise, I am not quite sure. I can't comment on it. Thank you so much. And with this, I think we'll end our event today. Uh, we have no more questions. And Gauriji, thank you once again for uh, thank you. Yeah. presenting this perspective, yeah. fantastic perspective. You know, the professor you in really shows up. You know, the fluency in your talks and the knowledge you have, amazing. Hopefully, we'll see you again with some other topics. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you all for joining.